Welcome to the launch of the PAHO UNICEF COVID-19 Vaccines Bring Us Closer Together campaign. Special welcome to the Honorable Malwin Joseph, Minister of Health, Wellness and Environment, Antigua and Barbuda. The Honorable Nicholas Steele, Minister of Health, Social Security and International Business Grenada. Dr. Alois Kamuragie, Representative UNICEF Eastern Caribbean. Dr. Itadis Gabre, PAHO WHO representative, Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean. Colleagues from PAHO, UNICEF and other UN agencies, ladies and gentlemen, members of the media. This campaign comes at a critical time in the cycle of the vaccine rollout campaigns in countries. Several countries have received or are in the process of receiving the second tranche of COVID-19 vaccines through the COVAX facility. And we are now more aware of concerns expressed by persons with respect to the vaccines. I am Karen Paulson Edwards, advisor for climate change and environmental determinants of health at PAHO. And it's my pleasure to chair this program this morning. So to get started, I will invite Dr. Itadis Gabri to bring some opening remarks. Dr. Gabri. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Olson. Um, good morning, the Honorable Sir Molwin Joseph, Minister of Health and Wellness and the Environment, Antigua and Barbuda. The Honorable Nicholas Steele, Minister of Health and Social Security and International Business, the Government of Grenada. Dr. Aloy Kamuraji, UNICEF representative to Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean area. Ministry of Health officials from the Eastern Caribbean countries and Barbados, chief medical officers, EPI managers, PAHO and UNICEF colleagues, members of the media. I extend a warm welcome on behalf of the director of PAHO, Dr. Carissa Etienne, and the director general of the World Health Organization, Dr. Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus. The COVID-19 outbreak and response has been accompanied by a massive infodemic, an overabundance of information, some accurate and some not. And that makes it hard for people to find trustworthy sources and reliable guidance when they need it. An infodemic is an overabundance of information, good or bad that also makes it difficult for people to make decisions for their health. The COVID-19 infodemic can harm health. Informed, engaged, and empowered communities are the bedrock of arrival of the new vaccines, treatments, and tests that would be introduced and to reduce the spread of COVID-19 and save lives. In this regard, we need to ensure access to trusted information and effectively manage misinformation and rumors. We need to activate or strengthen national fact checking and rumor monitoring capacity and recognizing that rumors and misinformation can be as dangerous as COVID-19. With communities fully engaged and actively participating through the full cycle of planning, delivery, and assessment for vaccines, the new biomedical tools, demand for these vaccines can be increased, leading to widespread and effective uptake and use. The empowerment of people and communities is not an abstract idea, and there is a concrete and measurable step that can be taken to ensure citizens are engaged and ready to support the new COVID-19 vaccines. Though communication needs may be slightly different for each tool, the principle is, remains the same. We have to promote their safe and successful introduction. PAHO and WHO holds regular press conferences in various languages to improve communication with the whole wide world. WHO has been monitoring global conversation 
on COVID-19 to detect early signs of growing interest in public engagement. Vaccine hesitancy is hampering the rollout of vaccines. The first procured through COVAX vaccine outside of India began arriving in, in, to recipient in countries in the Eastern Caribbean just during the Easter weekend. Barbados being the first recipient country and by 10 April 2021, all countries received their first shipment. The objective that has been to supply vaccine to each participating economy for the highest priority population. In the first half of the year, building towards the goal of protecting at least 20% of the population by the end of 2021. Within COVAX, UNICEF is leading shipping and delivery of vaccine to countries in the partnership and PAHO for shipment of in the Latin America and Caribbean countries. Of the 203 million doses currently allocated by COVAX for the first second and third allocation window, nearly 69 million doses have been delivered. Approximately 3.4 million doses are planned for shipment in the coming week. Grenada received approximately 11% of the target population. Dominica, 20% of the population. St. Lucia, 14%. St. Vincent, 11%. Barbados, 11%. St. Kiss, Nevis, 20% and then Antigua Barbuda, 14%. Our campaign today with the slogan COVID-19 vaccines bring us closer in response to the alleged vaccine hesitancy and resistance resulting in low uptake of the COVID vaccine in the Eastern Caribbean countries and keeping with the request made by some member states, at least two of the ministers of health articulating the need to the Pan-American Health Organization in partnership with UNICEF have developed a communication materials based on the, the issues and concerns on vaccine hesitancy. This communication material include videos, banners, social media cards, and radio public announcements. And an electronic copy of the campaign material will be shared for your viewing this morning. I ask the media houses to take this opportunity to bring this information to the public through the corporate social responsibility. The campaign is based on social data given an important perspective on community knowledge gaps, perceptions, and behavior. Understanding the drivers of behavior is also critical to understand why people may or may not be practicing public health and social measures. For something as complex as human behavior, a mix of data sources is important. What we do as a, a certain um, study at this point in time could be changing in the next few weeks and so forth. For example, if you go online and then check for blood clots and thrombosis in relation to AstraZeneca vaccine, if you Google in late March and April under the, this keyword, the risk of thrombosis, the contraceptive pills would be higher dangerous than the AstraZeneca vaccine for those who would have been taken and then looked at the data. However, the top lacked information would have been contraceptive pill has a higher potential blood clot rate than AstraZeneca vaccine. The comparison has been resonating strongly on social media platforms. Users express confusion and frustration over why the risk of thrombosis was enough for authorities to allegedly take AstraZeneca jab off the market in some countries. While comparable levels of risk are seemingly deemed acceptable for other products, as I mentioned. We need to listen to the concerns, translate science and communicate risk. We need to promote resilient to misinformation and engage and empower communities. While it is not possible to completely eliminate, it is possible to manage infodemic. For this, infodemic management must be backed by science, rely on evidence-based intervention, make use of the best practices, including sharing experiences and continuous. 
we understand misinformation, disinformation, fake news can cause real harm to health and public trust, social cohesion, and emergency response. To manage the infodemic, we need an evidence-based framework. These campaigns are the right information at the right time in the right format. I thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Gabri, for those opening remarks and for re-emphasizing the need for trusted information and for us to counter the misinformation and to manage the infodemics. Thank you very much. I will now ask Dr. Alois from UNICEF to bring some remarks. Over to you. Thank you, Dr. Karen Paulson. Can you hear me? Yes, Dr. Alois. All right, thank you. Honorable Molwin Joseph, Minister of Health, Wellness, and the Environment of Antigua and Barbuda. Honorable Nicholas Steele, Minister of Health, Social Security, and the International Business of Grenada. Permanent Secretaries, uh, Chief Medical Officers, and staff from Ministry of, of Health attending this lunch colleagues from PAHO, WHO, and UNICEF, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Thank you everyone for joining the launch of the communication campaign supported by PAHO and UNICEF COVID-19 vaccines bring us closer choose to be vaccinated. I seize this opportunity to commend all Caribbean countries and territories for the leadership and determination demonstrated in tackling timely COVID-19 pandemic. We have seen what happened in other countries not even far from the Caribbean, that demonstrated a poor leadership at the beginning of the pandemic. Despite fiscal constraints, the Caribbean subregion is among the first countries worldwide that managed to introduce COVID-19 vaccination in their arsenal to fight the pandemic. Many people across the Caribbean have taken the safe and the sensible step to get themselves vaccinated against COVID-19. We know this is vital to protect ourselves, our families, and our communities. However, however, while we celebrate the progress made so far, we recognize that there is still a long way to go. Vaccine hesitancy, Dr. Jebre alluded to that. Vaccine hesitancy in the Caribbean is still a huge issue among pockets of the population in several of our countries and territories. It is obvious that we can only really start finding our way through this crippling pandemic and returning to a semblance of the normal life when we reach the head immunity with an estimated 60 to 70% vaccination rate. As the tagline goes in the Antigua and Barbuda's vaccination campaign, each vaccinated or protected. This launch today is a step in the right direction in addressing hesitancy because we can never have too much information out there about the vaccines to persuade persons on the importance of getting vaccinated. 
The communication products that have been developed are vivid and vibrant and impart information in an entertaining and accessible way. The messages are clear and concise and address concerns we have all had expressed. UNICEF, as part of its communications and advocacy strategy, is committed to helping countries develop and implement tailored campaigns to strengthen confidence in immunization with the COVID-19 vaccines. To that, we have supported the Ministries of Health in Antigua and Barbuda, Barbados, the BT Virgin Islands, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Trinidad and Tobago, as well as Tax and Caicos Islands in their campaigns. I seize this opportunity to reiterate UNICEF offer to all Eastern Caribbean countries and territories technical and financial support in communication to increase the COVID-19 vaccine uptake so that we may reach the head immunity over the forthcoming months. Our collaboration here with PAHO today in the launch of this campaign is another indication of our commitment to help the region address the COVID-19 pandemic, which has negatively impacted families and by extension, children. By the way, UNICEF, we consider COVID-19 as a, a, a child crisis. We are committed to using an integrated approach with partners so that messages are aligned and amplified for maximum impact. I thank PAHO for the partnership in this initiative and we look forward to future collaborations. Let the COVID-19 vaccines bring us closer. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your attention. Back to you, Dr. Karen. Thank you very much, Dr. Alois, and thanks for pointing out the work that UNICEF has been doing in specific countries with respect to assisting in their individual communications campaigns as we seek to increase the uptake and to reduce the, the impacts of the, the myths. Thank you so much. At this time, I'm going to invite Honorable Nicola Steele, Minister of Health, Social Security and International Business, Grenada, to bring some remarks. Minister Steele, morning. Good morning, Dr. Paulson, Dr. Gebri, uh, and all of the esteemed colleagues and my colleague, Minister Malwin Joseph. Um, I am grateful for this opportunity. This is another milestone again, we have had significant challenges from day one. It started with our ability to even test for COVID-19. Then it was to get access to the, the testing machines. Then it was medication, access to medication. And finally, we thought we had passed the final hurdle, which was access to vaccines. Each time, all of these hurdles, all of these challenges have been based on our own individual limitations as developing countries, and also more importantly, outside influences. The same is true now for vaccine hesitancy. Like all other threats and shortfalls that we have had to overcome, we have done so by admitting that they are threats and shortfalls and tackling them head on. The, it's the success of this program and tackling vaccine hesitancy is imperative. We must regain the trust of our population. And that is truly what we are tackling here. If we fail, then we will lose all of our, our gains and all of the sacrifices would have been for naught. So I am most grateful for this initiative and I think we need to put all of our efforts, strength and resources into what I hope is this final hurdle in tackling COVID-19. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Minister Steele. Thank you for, for highlighting some of the risks and the challenges that we, we have faced and are facing and um, reiterating the point that together we have to work together to, sorry, together we have to work to try to um, rebuild the trust that has been lost from some of our populations. Thank you so much. I'm now going to ask Honorable Malwin Joseph, Minister of Health, Wellness and the Environment, Antigua and Barbuda, to bring some remarks. Minister Joseph. Well, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Paulson. Let me uh, also recognize Dr. Itadis Gebre and my other colleagues. And um, express, first of all, my deep appreciation to PAHO and UNICEF for coming in, in such a short time to address a critical problem facing all of us here in the Caribbean. I want to commend PAHO for its nimbleness, however. This is not the first time that PAHO has had to step in to, take, uh, to assist us in taking urgent measures to overcome a problem. To address the issue of vaccine hesitancy, brings to mind that there is indeed a possibility that this hesitancy in public health points to a larger problem. And even though this response is critical, we cannot ignore the possibility that vaccine as a public health measure is not fully understood. And so this might also suggest that beyond vaccine, there is a need for greater emphasis on public health education, especially in the area of primary health care. Powerhouse intervention, therefore, must also be seen in the context that if vaccine hesitancy results in uh, the spoilage of vaccines, then that creates another problem in terms of our countries accessing the appropriate amount of vaccines for the population. I want also to deviate a bit because I'm looking beyond COVID-19. And I now have to wonder having participated in several of these meetings, whether or not the lack of success in fighting NDCs and fighting simple issues such as front of labor packaging, they are not also related to the lack of education in our population. And if COVID has done anything, or let me put it this way, if COVID uh, has done many negative things in the population. Perhaps the most positive thing that COVID has done for us is to alert us that we have a lot more to do in terms of getting our population on board. We cannot see COVID as totally negative because as we know, one of the things that has exacerbated COVID-19 as, uh, as a disease is the prevalence of NDCs in our population. And so I welcome this uh, initiative, but I wish to say that all the weaknesses that we have discovered as a result of COVID requires the involvement of the population. And it also requires a recognition that we need to educate our public more in terms of personal responsibility beyond COVID. One of the biggest drawbacks we have in, um, in the Caribbean, Antigua and Barbuda, uh, uh, no exception, is that we just, could not, we just do not get our citizens to take up their personal responsibility. And this problem now is manifested uh, graphically in our experience with COVID. And so I welcome this campaign and I'm hoping that from this campaign would, uh, uh, would result in a, in a greater recognition that education of our population is as important 
at the very med as the very medication we would wish for our population to accept as being safe and efficacious. I look forward to this discussion and I thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you very much, Minister Joseph, for showing us a positive spin on COVID in a sense in that COVID has shown us where we need to do more work and the importance of involvement of communities and personal responsibility for members of the, the, the populations in terms of health and the need for public health education in the wider context of primary health care. So yes, we still have a lot to do and a long way to go. And um, as you pointed out, COVID-19 has shown us some of the areas that we need to really do a lot of work in. Thank you so much, Minister. So at this time, I'm going to ask my colleague, Dr. Darlene Amir Taylor, Family and Community Health Advisor, to give us an overview of the situation of COVID-19 vaccines in the Caribbean. Over to you, Darlene. Thank you so much, Karen. So what I'm going to do in the next minute is just to give a brief overview so we could get an idea in what context this campaign is being um, launched. The next slide, please. So in general, um, just to let you know that most of the vaccines that are being utilized in the Caribbean is AstraZeneca, whichever form, but it's been AstraZeneca is one of the most used. And later on in the following slide, I'll show you that most countries are actually combining vaccines. We have very few countries only using one. In the English speaking Caribbeans are all participants of the COVAX facility. And we have four advanced market commitment countries, meaning that they receive vaccines um, through a donation mechanism as opposed to other countries that are self-financing. And most of the Caribbean countries started their deployment in February and um, March. And this is very important because what we're gonna see in the next slide is a result of barely three to four months of work. So as I said earlier, the vaccines that are most used is AstraZeneca, and, you know, Vaxeria, Covishield. We have some countries using Pfizer, Moderna, Gamalea, and this is in the full um, Caribbean. And as you will see, we have more than 25 countries there, and that's because many countries are combining the use of, um, of COVID-19 vaccines. So in the next slide now, we're going to see how many vaccines have been applied. And this is a cumulative um, chart, and we're looking at first doses and second doses. But what it's saying is the intensive work that many countries have put in place to um, roll out the vaccine program. So we're looking at countries like Barbados, for example, over 100,000 vaccines have been um, applied in less than four months. And this is an intensive work that I think we need to recognize our nurses, particularly now that we're in the month of nurses, um, International Day for Nurses, because we know this is an intensive work. We see countries like Guyana are above 140,000 vaccines being um, applied. The next slide, please. We have some countries that with a bit less, but we still, you know, 20,000, for example, above um, is Grenada is a lot of vaccine being applied. As again, to recognize that this, um, this modality of vaccination is relatively new, we had much more experience in vaccinating children than adults. And although countries had prepared their um, implementation plan, I think this is an important effort that we should recognize because it's been done in a very, very short time. However, this full number is um, it's showing a lot of effort of vaccine rollout. But if we look at the next slide, we are measuring how many vaccine has been applied per 100 population. This is gonna cater for us, for those countries that have more population than, um, <clears throat> than others. So it makes the comparison a bit more fair. And this scenario changes a bit. So we see now, for example, at the top, we have Cayman Island with a high, high implementation doses per 100. We still Anguilla, one of our Eastern Caribbean countries, way up in the top. And if you look at this slide, this is not only Caribbean. I actually am comparing it with the overall region. So here we have the United States of America, and you can see most of the Caribbeans are top, you know. So the Caribbean has been doing very, very important 
um, and good work in terms of um, rolling out the vaccines. We can see Dominica. Dominica is in the top group as well. And as I said earlier, this is um, this is the full um, America, the region of the America. So the Caribbean is uh, very, very um, um, advanced in the vaccination rollout. And in the next slide, we see the other countries a bit farther down, but still um, an important advancement has been done. Now, in the another slide, I pull out specifically data for the Eastern Caribbean. And I, um, if you look at the column that says coverage on second dose and completed schedule per 100 people, this is even a better indicator because it allows us to see how many people, how many people have received two doses per 100. And to note that Dominica has a very, one of the highest, and I take this opportunity to recognize Dominica and this effort, and, of, and consequent their coverage is also high. You might see a slight difference here because I'm reporting in this last column for Epi Week 19, as opposed to the coverage, which was is the reports from yesterday. So, um, if we look at our target to reach some form of herd immunity, we can see then where this campaign is very needed to scale up efforts that countries are already doing to be able to increase this coverage on second dose, dose because um, unfortunately, most of our countries, the vaccines that we're using, and I say unfortunately because for the rollout is more challenging, we require two doses. So, um, um, finally, in the next slide, I just wanted to highlight then that overall the Caribbean has a higher rate of doses applied per 100 persons. And this does not necessarily mean that um, the other countries are not, but because some of the other Ameri um, region countries do not have vaccines available as we do in the Caribbean. However, we need to scale up efforts. We need to reach that herd immunity. I know at some point many ministers had take up the challenge to try to reach to that herd immunity by December 2021. <clears throat> but as, as we have been discussing, we have important challenges what have to do with the demand, public demand. So this campaign is setting the scenario and we are very confident and hoping that this could be joint efforts with countries and we could soon have a much more uptake of the vaccines. Thank you, Karen, back to you. Thank you very much, Darlene, for showing us the numbers, which, which show us that, you know, yes, we are doing pretty okay, but we still have a lot to do. And so, again, the importance of this campaign in order to increase the uptake of vaccines for us to mm -hmm. at least achieve herd immunity in our countries. So now I'm going to ask Dr. Lisa McLean Thomas, sorry, Trotman, communication, um, for Development Specialist at UNICEF and Ms. Lisa Bailey, our Communications Consultant, PAHO, to now showcase some of the campaign materials. Over to you, Lisa and Lisa. Good morning, Karen. Thank you so much for um, providing us with the opportunity to share the campaign materials with the media. So we're basically going to show you what we have produced, and then we will show you where you can um, obtain the information. So next slide, please. So just a quick background, as you would have heard that there's high vaccine hesitancy, it was higher, we would say probably early in the year. So what UNICEF and PAHO we did was that we did a review of social media posts um, to understand the sentiment of our Caribbean people and what they were saying, what we recognized there were lots of myths about the vaccine and, you know, and this was leading to vaccine hesitancy. We also realized that the pandemic had negatively impacted all sectors of the society throughout the Caribbean. And for UNICEF, as um, Dr. Alois would have alluded to earlier, children were some of the silent victims of COVID-19 due to the impact on their families, education, they socialized, among other impacts. So it's very, this whole idea of getting involved in vaccination is very important to us. Next slide, please. So our objective was to address some of the concerns that Caribbean people had had, and which some of them still do have about the vaccine. Next slide. So the campaign, we would have done radio ads, posters, different social media cards for the different social media platforms, as well as television ads. 
Next slide, please. And the topics are going to focus on what we saw were coming up from when we examined the social media posts. There were concerns about vaccine safety, how they were developed, how do they work, and the benefits of taking the vaccines. And based on that, then we decided that these will be the topics then that we will focus on for our campaign materials. Next slide. So as I said, we've done posters and social media cards, and I'm just going to take you through those quickly, and Lisa will take you through the TV ads. So um, again, one of the issues about vaccine safety, and we, needed, we felt we needed to remind the public that the vaccines aren't approved unless they're safe and effective. They go through the same processes as well as other vaccines, which we know about. Next slide. Um, again, looking at vaccine safety, we we wanted to make certain that the public know that vaccines, they do go through three different clinical trial phases. They're constantly being monitored and that this was a big issue that there's nothing in the vaccines that would affect your genetic code. Next slide, please. And then how do they work? Again, there were some misconceptions about how they work. So our campaign is focusing on educating persons about how they work. And you know that they help your immune systems to fight infections faster. The radio ads and the television ads will go into a bit more details, but this is what you will find on the um, on the posters. That in a nutshell, vaccines, like any other vaccine, help your immune system to fight infections uh, faster. And then the side effects. Initially, before we had many people coming forward, there were so many concerns about the side effects. You would have seen lots of memes and so on our social media posts about what would happen if you took the vaccine. So we felt we needed to dispel those myths and just to let people know that they're just common symptoms you find primarily in any vaccine, soreness at the injection sites, chills, nausea, body aches, fever. Um, next slide. Right, and then the benefits. We wanted for people to recognize what were the benefits of taking the vaccines. They're gonna to help to build your immune system to emphasize the fact that if you, if you are you know, fully immunized, it will protect you from severe illness and the complications that were associated with COVID-19 and reduce your risk of hospitalization. So these are the key messages that, you've, that we have in our, um, in our campaigns. And I'm gonna ask Lisa now to focus on the television as well as the radio spots. So over to you, Lisa. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, a pleasure for me to be here with you this morning. Uh, welcome to everyone who's joined us for this feed. So you've seen all of the social media cards. And as Lisa says, the radio and the TV ads build on these. Uh, I'm going to just show you two of the videos today. And after this, Brenda will take you through the website where you can get access to all of the videos and the radio cards. So we're going to focus on vaccine safety and how vaccines work. And I just wanted to say that we did test the materials in two countries, St. Kitts and Nevis and also Grenada, and they, they love them so much so that they were ready to go. And we asked them to just hold on for a little bit as we launched the campaign. So two countries have seen the materials and they did think that they're very useful and helpful and are, are ready to get going. And we hope that you will share them as well. Uh, we, we thought it was important, as Lisa said, to focus in on what we are hearing, what we're seeing people say are the concerns. And we're gonna focus in on vaccine safety. And to do that, we thought it was important to use a trusted healthcare, someone who works in healthcare in the Caribbean, who is known in the Caribbean. So that video features Professor Peter Figueroa. He's head of the Caribbean Immunization Technical Working Group called CITAC. And he talks about vaccine safety and the fact that it is a priority. And then the other one that we'll show you this morning talks about how vaccines work because we realize that persons do have some concerns about how these vaccines actually work in your bodies. Um, I've listened to what the ministers have said. We are here to support you. This is just the beginning and we do want to continue because as, as it was said earlier, this continues to change. Um, the messages that would have come out last year, even two months ago would be different. So we do intend to continue to update the messages to continue to support you. And we really hope that you will use these materials. So I'll let Brenda share those two videos now. So Brenda, you can share screen and share those two. Thank you. Vaccine safety is always a top priority. And this is no different from the COVID-19 vaccines. The COVID vaccines that we have available are very effective and safe 
and it is very important for elderly persons and frontline health workers and other frontline workers to get it because these vaccines protect you from becoming ill if you get COVID. As COVID-19 vaccines are approved for use in the general population, monitoring for safety continues. Each COVID-19 vaccine goes through the same clinical trials and rigorous study as with all other vaccines, with the focus on safety and efficacy. Nothing goes into the nucleus, nothing affects the genetic code of the human. It is a very safe vaccine. This is a vaccine that we all need to take because it will keep us safe. Vaccines bring us closer. Choose to get vaccinated. Over the years, vaccines have protected us from serious diseases like whooping cough, chicken pox, polio, measles, and others. Vaccines help your immune system do its job better and faster, and that protects you from serious diseases. Like a police officer, your immune system is always on patrol in your body looking for invading germs. When it comes across a germ, it begins releasing antibodies to fight the germ. These antibodies work to attack, weaken, and destroy the germ. The COVID-19 vaccine is no different. It will work to help your immune system fight COVID-19 effectively. You are important to your family and friends. Vaccines bring us closer. Choose to get vaccinated. So those are just two of the five videos and I wanna encourage you to please use them uh, freely. Please share them uh, with your, your counterparts, your colleagues, your friends on your platforms. And what we will also do is share the scripts with you because if there's, uh, if you want to do the radio ads in your own voice, in your own dialect, we will share the, the script with you. So that if you want to do that, you can do that as well. So please use the materials and let's let the vaccines bring us closer. Thank you. Brenda. Brenda, you're muted. Thank you very much, ladies. So Brenda will take us through. Brenda is our information system specialist, and she will speak to the next steps in the rolling out of the campaign. Over to you, Brenda. Good morning. I have the pleasure of showing the, the web page this morning. So let me share. Okay, so the campaign web page is actually hosted on PAHO's website. It is accessible from a no number of pages within our site, but it's specifically hosted on a, the camp PAHO's campaigns page, which is dedicated to all the campaigns that PAHO is currently have. So this is the campaign here, COVID-19 vaccines bring us closer together. Okay, so the communication materials which my colleagues would have spoken about recently are um, including videos, social media cards, public service announcements are all hosted here. These are the five videos which were mentioned by Lisa previously. Then we have the public service announcements. The public service announcements are easy to play and download. For example, vaccine safety is always a top priority. Like other vaccines, the COVID-19 vaccines being developed have been through the same trial phases and rigorous process required for all vaccines. Global efforts on the development of the vaccines are built on existing research from previous coronaviruses like MERS and SARS-1. As COVID-19 vaccines are approved for their broad use in the population, be reassured that they will continue to be monitored to identify any adverse events. Your safety is our top priority. Vaccines bring us closer. 
choose to get vaccinated. A message from the Pan American Health Organization, UNICEF, and the Ministry of Health. Okay, so you just click on this button to play the, the PSA and to download the instruction here to download. Just right click and you download the PSA. These next six videos were not developed specifically for the campaign. They're actually rec recordings of messages done by prime ministers, ministers of health, and the nurse when the COVID-19 vaccines provided to the COVAX facility were delivered in the Eastern Caribbean last month. We thought that these short clips would add value to the campaign as they touch on some salient points about vaccines and vaccination, including the efficacy, the economic impact, herd immunity, and dispelling some myths. We even have here a vaccine re recipient who provided a testimonial. Two of our ministers in the meeting this morning, the Honorable, Honorable Sir Malwin Joseph and Honorable, Honorable Nicholas Steele, they have, we have included two clips of them that were provided through the, when the vaccines arrives. So I will play both clips for you. First Minister Joseph. Minister for Health, the Honorable Malwin Joseph, underscored the importance of herd immunity. This is the most important phase we are entering now. Because unless we achieve herd immunity in Antigua and Barbuda, we are not going to be on the level of the developed countries on whom we rely for our business, our markets, United States and United Kingdom. Within a matter of two or three months, they would have achieved herd immunity. We must not be left behind. We must also achieve herd immunity in Antigua and Barbuda. Okay, and now Minister Steele. They're very short clips. There is a light with the arrival of vaccines into Grenada, and that light, if we use these vaccines appropriately and quickly, will be the light at the end of the tunnel. We have fragile economies, fragile health systems. We cannot afford to take for granted the risk that we still have. There still is a clear and present danger and risk of COVID-19. We need to prepare ourselves as best as possible for whatever will come. And that is, like in all other aspects, being vaccinated. Okay, here are the, the social media cars, which my colleague Lisa spoke about. The social media cars are designed specifically for the social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. The message, the cars are color coded based on the five topic areas. Like for example, this first card is for Facebook in red. And if it, you look at the other, one that is color coded red that's for a facebook cover page and then for instagram here's they're all the same message but for different platforms okay so all the social media cards are here and they're easy to download you just click on the download button and you download them on your system these are the scripts for the, the suggested messages for the social media cars, which we will be using to promote the, the, the messages. So they're here available. If needed, you can download them. So these are the messages for each of the topic areas. And then we have a section for more information. We have a link to PAHO COVID-19 vaccines page a link to the Eastern Caribbean website and also the sub-regional program coordinator site and UNICEF as well. As Lisa mentioned, we will be updating the page continuously as new information comes to hand. So please feel free to continue to monitor our page. Thanks for your attention. Thank you very much, Brenda, um, for showcasing the, the page and what's available. And um, 
for inviting persons to access and for making it easy for persons to access for different platforms. So I'm going to open at this time for some questions from the media, if there are any. And we're joined by our colleague, Dr. Karen Broom, who is the advisor for immunization for the Caribbean subregion. In the event that um, there are any technical questions, we'll need some assistance with. So is there any question from any um, from the media? I'm seeing a hand. Paula Lindo, can you identify yourself, please, and proceed? Paula, I'm not hearing if you're speaking. Okay, uh, right, the there we go. Go ahead. Yes, yeah. go ahead. Thank you. So I have no problem. I have three questions actually based on the, the information that was presented. The first one is what, which of the various forms of information in the campaign would you suggest we use for what in Trinidad and Tobago we call the Tanti Misinformation Network, which is where older people especially circulate messages on WhatsApp, which they tend to believe in more than you know anything that is said on the news anything in the newspapers that kind of stuff um that's my first question the second question you said that you would be giving us access to the media scripts um is it that you only want media personnel to use these or can like social media influencers and those people use them as well to um to influence the people they did they influence and then the third question was i saw two health ministers in the last set of clips have you approached all the health ministers in the different countries to do um clips like this thank you very much for your questions paula um can you just let us know where you are which um entity you're mm -hmm. associated with please Sure, the Newsday, Trinidad and Tobago. Newsday, thank you very much for joining us, Paula. So there are three questions. I will, I'm not sure who would want to take them The um, in terms of the network using, using um, getting to older persons, I'm, I'm thinking that's, you know, using various forms of the information, then the access to the um, media scripts the last question I possibly could take, um, uh, um, the health ministers and the ones that we have focused on our page, the, our office here um, covers Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean countries. So it would have been um, ministers from those countries which we um, are involved with. And so those were the, um, the, the, clips from the when the vaccines arrived through the COVAX facility, when the vaccines arrived in these countries. So those are the ones that are there. But I would think from the Caribbean, from the sub-regional um, office, it would be possible to do that. Um, I will ask probably Lisa Bailey, you want to um, follow sure. up and yeah. Sure, thank you. Thank you, Paula. Very good questions. Um, and I. I, I agree, Karen, I think that's something that we can do. Uh, we definitely can ask some of the other ministers uh, to do clips. I think it's a, a great idea and I'm really happy that we included those on the website. In terms of sharing, and I, and I laugh because I also have parents who share lots of those, you know, every message you get, they're shared on WhatsApp. Uh, I would suggest that some of these materials you can probably download and share via your phone as, as well. I tend to use a lot of our materials from PAHO and I share them. That's the only way we can combat misinformation with real information that you can trust. So I would say some of these cards, and if you are having a problem with this size, reach out to us. I will put my email here if you need a smaller, if you can't get it sized to send in WhatsApp, maybe that's something that we can add. I can talk to Brenda about that because we do need to get it out there in the same way that the infodemic is spreading. I would suggest in terms of 
not only older people, but people in general. That's why we insisted that we would also have radio PSAs. I think radio is very powerful. Um, I think that we can definitely focus on getting these out across the Caribbean, definitely in the ECC countries, but across the Caribbean on radio. And that's why I included the scripts because if there are other languages, I do see a, a comment in the, in the room about Spanish. If you want to translate them and use them, this is trusted information you can use to create your own messages. So those would be my suggestions. Questions. Thank you very much, Lisa. And um, I think also the person was asking for, um, I'm not sure if it was the materials, Lisa spoke to that, if it was, if it is with respect to the launch for us to have simultaneous translation to Spanish, we take note of that and will make effort for future. Um, have, have we adequately responded to you, Paula? I think I forgot one thing. Yes, anybody who's who's sharing information can use this information. It is not just for journalists. Um, social media influencers sometimes sometimes have a bigger reach than some journalists. So yes, if you're an influencer, once you can access the materials, please feel free to share them and, and share them with the means of getting good information out there. Yes, that was that that answered my questions. I the you said the the cards can be shared, but are the videos of our size that we can also download and, and share them? Um, Brenda? Yes, you can actually download the videos from YouTube. And if you contact us directly, we can make arrangements. If you can't, if you're not permitted to do so, we will send you the video. So just make contact with our office. Okay, thank you. I see a hand, Nadine, hi. Nadine, go ahead. You're still muted, Nadine. Nadine, you're muted if you're speaking. Can you unmute your mic, please? I was trying to unmute her, but while we wait, while we wait on her, there's a question in the question and answer box. Mm -hmm. I know that there has been some hesitancy in pregnant women and breastfeeding mothers when it comes to taking the vaccine. And there have been mixed views from doctors regarding these women using the vaccine. Has there been any new research suggesting the safety of taking the vaccine? Darlene, would you like to take that one? Yeah, I could start and then if anything, Karen, Karen could. Mm -hmm. um, but what the guidance says, and it, um, in most vaccines, because we do have guidance specific for each vaccines, but what it generally says is that if the pregnant woman and if the, um, um, was the pregnant woman and the other one was the breastfeeding mom, if they are in the high risk group, then they should take the vaccine. So high risk group, meaning that you have some underlying conditions or you're a frontline worker or you're highly exposed to, to, to um, getting COVID-19, then the guidance says you should take the vaccines. So um, there's no evidence to show that the vaccine does any harm. More research is being done. But if you're in the high risk, obviously the benefits outlay any potential risk over. Thank you. Um, I think Nadine probably disappeared. If you're hearing Nadine, maybe you could type your question or comment. Probably she was having some difficulty. Dr. Paulson, she said it was accidental, so you can move on. Okay, okay. Um, Dr. Gabre, please go ahead. I, I, I think the question also included breastfeeding. Um, I think we, we, we have to address that one as well. So vaccination with any vaccine products uh, uh, that have been assessed by the uh, WHO can be offered to breastfeeding women if they are breastfeeding. So uh, th th that's not a problem. As Dr. Um, uh, Omer mentioned, we don't have a larger data in terms of the the efficacy in pregnancy or any uh, effect uh, during a pregnancy. Uh, however, women who may have uh, a healthcare worker and pregnant, 
then the benefits outweigh the risk. Therefore, she has to be vaccinated. If the, the, the lady is pregnant and also may have diabetes or any other conditions, respiratory diseases, asthma, et cetera, uh, to be vaccinated would be appropriate. Uh, so this has to be also in collaboration with her physician decision and consultation. Back to you. Thank you very much, Dr. Gabri. And I'm seeing here uh, someone is asking, and this is, is, is one of the areas we need to take up as we develop materials, more for the materials. Can there be content on the topic of breastfeeding and fertility? Ah, she's speaking to including the emotional appeal in videos. So it's, it's, it's a request for, for some materials to focus a bit more on that emotional side. Yes, thank you very much, Delicia. Um, Bonnie, we, we take note. Are there any additional questions or comments? I'm not seeing, oh yes, sorry. Uh, Sherry, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly, Brathwaite from the Nation newspaper. Welcome, thanks for your comment, your question. We have a major concern about businesses intimidating their workers to take the vaccine in Barbados and the petition was submitted to the prime minister. I would like to know how PAHO feels about this given there is a concern about vaccine hesitancy in the region. Um, Dr. Gabri, would you? like to take this one. A concern about businesses intimidating their workers to take the vaccine in Barbados and a petition was submitted to the prime minister. What's PAHO's views um, about vaccine, about this, given that there is a concern about vaccine hesitancy in the region? Um. Uh, thank you very much for that question. Um, I don't want to speak uh, directly about the uh, government um, petition and response uh, that I, I will leave it to the government to respond. Uh, however, from WHO point of view and PAHO, we does not envision that countries will implement mandates of vaccination against COVID-19 at this time. But there are certain situations where a strong uh, recommendation to be vaccinated may be issued, for instance, for healthcare workers, as we said uh, earlier, frontline workers, where there will be a risk for themselves. And at the same time, they will be also passing, if infected, to the people they will be caring for or to. So the, this is, will be the, the areas we could say about mandatory uh, vaccination. However, in situations where voluntary vaccine uptake is inadequate, uh, the, the COVID transmission rate also remain unacceptable. And then that will result the, the so-called lockdowns and shutdowns in order to avoid this, this kind of situation. There, sometimes there may be needed to have mandates uh, to, for requirements uh, for uh, vaccination. At present time, we have very limited doses of vaccine. Uh, we are looking at the 20% of vaccination doses at the end of this year. Therefore, there is no way we could uh, talk about mandatory vaccination. Uh, and uh, the other issue is that th there is a legal, ethical issues related to vaccination at this point in time. And then the duration of the protection, the, the, at this point in time, we, we know it may be protecting up to six months, uh, maybe some studies show up to eight months. So are we gonna do mandatory vaccination every six months, every four months? So there are so many things we are doing at this point in time to learn more before we reach to this mandatory vaccination level. However, education is the most important aspect. And finally, we still wanted to continue on uh, you, you wearing uh, masks, uh, social, uh, physical distancing, um, uh, and uh, continue to res have respiratory etiquette. Those are the most important me measures uh, rather than to talk about mandatory vaccination. Thank you very much, back to you. Thank you. I see Paula has another question or comment. Or sure. in the slides earlier by, I think it was Dr. Omer, right. Um, 
she was talking about the vaccinations per 100 population, but I wanted to know if that those statistics took into account the fact that while people, while countries may want to vaccinate their people and people may want to get vaccinated, we also have an issue of not being able to get vaccines. So I don't know if that was factored in. So I actually made the comment that although we see the Caribbean at the top, it does not mean necessarily that, that, the, that the performance from the other countries are affected, but rather it has it may be related to access as well. So that is all that is that has to be considered when looking at those numbers, definitely. But um, overall, we we see a different scenario in terms of um, access to vaccines in other countries outside the Caribbean as opposed to the Caribbean. Over. Thank you. Um, there's a question. How do we access vaccines in Barbados? I believe that's through the Ministry of Health and there is a dedicated um, GIS COVID site um, where you can obtain additional information um, if required. Um, there's a comment here from Beverly. Important that policymakers be reminded that an enabling policy environment with policy coherence across sectors is just as crucial as education for NCD prevention and control. The policy environment is an important factor in making the healthy choice the easy choice. Well said, Beverly. Thank you very much. Is there any additional question or comment? Um, I'm not seeing any. Okay. Okay, so I thank you all very much for your engagement. Thank you for your questions and your comments. We take note of them and the suggestions for additional material, keep them coming. Cause as was said, we will continue to update as new information becomes available because the situation is evolving even as we speak. So I would like to, on that note, thank very much. Um, Honorable Nicola Steele, Honorable Malwin Joseph, Dr. Alois, Dr. Gabre, and colleagues from PAHO, UNICEF, and others, members of the media for joining us this morning for this launch. Um, we continue to encourage you and to ask you to visit the site, to access the materials, to download, to share, 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 as we try to get the message across that COVID-19 vaccines bring us together. So choose to get vaccinated. And with that, I thank you very much. Do have a good day and a good weekend. Stay safe. And Bye. We have a, please, a photo, please. Group photo, please. Oh, sorry. Can you all open your cameras, please, so that we can have a photo? Brenda, you can tell us when you're ready. Okay. One second, please. Okay, three, two, one, ready. Thank you. Thank you all very much and take care. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Karen.